Okay, so what we're going to do is learn how to manage the layers in Carlson Survey. So we'll click on our layer manager. It's off screen. See if we can fit this on here somehow where it's not completely blocking everything. So obviously if we go here, these layers here that I just highlighted, they control the points that are created when you go points, draw locate points. And those type of points are the points where they're associated with a point node and they act as a block. We don't have any in here, so let's um, let's just go points, draw locate points, and draw eight eleven. Eight eleven. Now, right now, it just shows a node. Just shows a node. So let's go back to our layer manager. We'll turn on these layers. Sorry for the windows. So now 811 looks like a block. If you go points, move point attributes with a leader, it moves around, but it's still associated with that node. That's a little bit different. And, and this is when I do fill to finish, it also creates this point block entity, but it also creates this separate text. Now this text isn't associated with this node. It just it can go on its own. You can edit this text without it affecting the point description. So if we were to click on if we were to double click on this, it brings up this edit point and then you could literally edit what's in the database. When you edit this text, it's simply text. So when I do fill to finish, it draws this and then it has this text here. And we do that because this is the finished product and that symbol's the finished product. So let's do this. Let's do a little quick fill to finish. I'll fill to finish. We'll do 811. And everything's set up and filled to finish on what layer name, what I want to call it, what symbol to put at, and what we have for the text. Okay. And this stuff here, it comes in this way. We can actually edit that with a global edit. So we don't really like the way that comes in. So you could literally just do this, go control C, and you could go to edit. And I think, uh, let's see. Oh, actually we just type in replace, I believe. Replace, replace, no. Oh, rename, that's right. You know, not sticking to a script, so. Well, we'll do that later. Never mind. Let's stay focused on this. So, you've got these layers, right? But these, you don't want these showing up in the final product. So, you go back to your layer manager. So, now what we do is we just turn and freeze these. And. So now, if we had any of those in the drawing, would they would disappear. So if we look at the XREF, this is part of the XREF. If we go to the XREF here, and we turn off these, and we'll turn off the control point too. And we go like this. Now all of a sudden you'll notice the control's gone, and then all that text is gone, right? 
that happen because we turn off those layers. Now let's deal with our drawing. So we'll go all, or we'll go non XREF layers. And here we didn't really have any entities in our drawing that way because I replaced it. But when it comes to the set points, we do have it. So it's the same thing. Points, mon, set, description, elevation, mark, number. So you turn off the number, turn off the elevation, the description, right? And now look. Now you just have the symbol and the text. Symbol, text, symbol, text. This one you have the number and the text. Now this is this this isn't on a separate layer. The number and the text aren't on a separate layer because remember this is the dumb text that's not associated with this point in a CAD way. It's associated with it in that this is 304 and that is the description, but this text can be edited without affecting the database. So for instance, for a finished product, we may not have 304. I, I kind of like having it in there, but let's say you didn't want it in there. Well, when you delete that, it doesn't change the database. It doesn't get rid of the point number. And this, we could change to found, right? Now, there is a global way to do this, and because I'm doing it on the spur, I can't remember the command in Carlson, but there is a way to just change that. I thought it was replaced, but I'm probably not thinking of the right command right now. Anyway, you can change the text. You can add a leader to it. There you go, leader. You start it here, and then you go format spline. Okay, now you found um, that pipe. Then you can change all these numbers. You know, change this text as you need, move it, do all the stuff you need to do. That can stay because it's on this layer points, mon, found text. I usually don't have that as white. So that's here. Right there, we'll usually have that green. Okay. And that is just text. We want the mark on and we want the, so here's all the point entity layers and we're leaving the mark on only. If we were to turn the number on and the elevation and the description, then this is what it would look like. Now we've got all that stuff back. See, we've got all that stuff. So here's the here's the point we were editing the the information for or not that point this point this point oh where'd it go oh we turned the f oh that's right it's a found my apologies let's go to points mon I have the points found text a little bit different setup than um, than the rest of it because in my drawings and this is all controlled by fill to finish. So for the found text, these generic layers are these generic layers here: point description elevation mark number. So in Carlson, I can tell, I can tell it, hey, for the set monuments, I want the point entity layers on a different layer. And that's what I do. But for the found, I have them all on these kind of master layers that every point entity ends up on pretty much. And that's why when I do this, all the all those layers are gone except for the found monument. Okay, that's in an XREF. So let's turn off the XREF layers. So 
it's a great example of layer management right so okay let's turn them off for some reason they were still showing up we'll just turn all this off and then we've got point mount and then the text and we'll get rid of the monument and even the mark because it's just doubled up in there look gone okay so now we just have text dumb text I call it and the symbol and the symbol smart see how it shows up as part of the block that's where it should be so you just leave it on and leave that on then you manipulate that um, here's the point entity block here it is it's a group it calls it a group so if you just go to your layer manager and you go to here and you go down and this is where you can get rid of the description elevation and number bam now you just have the, the point entity it's the wrong color I don't you like using white for me that's a very bold color so let's do green and let's do red actually 40 okay and there you go comes in the right color we've got this associated text we've got this text here now this will be able to manipulate put a leader to it so that's how you manage the point layers in Carlson but it all depends on how you set it up. We can dive into that a little bit. So if we go survey, draw field to finish. And we go edit codes. And we go monuments. So M-O-N-S, if we hit edit, it says distinct point layer, points, mon, set points. And then it breaks them off out into those separate um, it breaks them out into those separate multi-layer grouped point entities where it was uh, points elev points description and so on and now let's go to and this is where you tell it what to look for what points to do here's your GIS we just have the description as a separate text entity and that's the layer it goes on I'm trying to find and see how it says separate attribute layers that's where it creates those different layers that are the point entities grouped together as a contrast let's look at uh, MONF edit and here I have a distinct point layer, but um, we didn't, we didn't, and I still have a separate text layer here for the point number and description. That's just dumb text. It's not database associated with the point node or symbol. But it didn't break it out into the different, um, into the different layers like the other one did so in order for me to speak about this intelligently let me take a snipe let's go back to MONS because I'm doing this video extemporaneously here so I gotta get my facts straight so why is it that the Mon S has its own separate distinct point grouping entity layers and the MONF doesn't? Well, on here's the difference right here. So we're kind of digging into too much information here, but basically MONF has attribute format both separate attribute layers symbols and so it just creates a separate 
distinct layer for the symbol and then all the others go into that point descript point elev point no whereas with the mon set because i say both it's creating all those different layers for the mon set so let's get rid of this kind of um kind of uh, a lot of information, but let's take a look at it. So basically, MONF doesn't have both selected. And so then they just throws all the entities under these three or four layers, really. Okay. Even point mark doesn't have its own distinct layer, except the out of the box layers that Carlson assigns to it. Whereas the MONS, as in MON set, it has all those layers all broken out. Did I have to do it that way? No, I kind of set it up that way. Um, I think there was a reason. Um, and one of the reasons could be where you turn off all this noise here. And then when you're doing an exhibit, you can control the monument set more. Whatever. Um, it's just the way I have it set up. But those are the layers that you use to control the point entities. Don't explode them. Use these layers to control it. Okay, and that does it for the video today.